Welcome back to the truck. Appreciate y'all listening. Everybody who's listened out there. Um, just a short little word today. It's nighttime, as you can tell. Crickets are chirping. I uh, just wanted to check in with you. Wanted to talk a little about uh, eschatology. There's a lot of people out there saying there is no rapture. There will be no catching away of the saints. No ultimate resurrection. There was a resurrection when Jesus was crucified. That was the first resurrection. Everybody else is... Well, if you find out what the second resurrection is, you probably want to change your tune on that. But that's not really the point. The point is, your eschatology may be clouded by your lack of ecclesiology. Ecclesiology is the study of the church. Eschatology is the study of the last days. And really, it can all be uh, changed drastically when you understand soteriology, which is the study of salvation and what it is that it means uh, to be a member of the church versus what it means to be ultimately redeemed and or saved. Uh, a lot of people like to use that word saved, unsaved. Um, Jesus... Uh, if you remember correctly, took away the sins of the world. That was the quote that John uh, said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Ultimately, the redemption is a worldwide, uh, I don't like to use this word because it makes everybody think I'm Catholic, but universal redemption, Jesus purchased every soul, Everything is his, the universe, the cosmos, it's all his. Uh, he, his redeeming act was all-inclusive, period. But that leads people to think that everybody is in the church. Well, that's ridiculous. If you go down the line of what it means to be a believer and to have this hope of the rapture, um, believing in love changes your relationship to someone. If you don't believe, you probably shouldn't expect a rapture. That's true at all. Now, now ultimate redemption, I'm not condemning everybody who doesn't believe right now to hell. Hell is a mystery beyond what we have full doctrinal understanding of. And sometimes you have to just hold those things in that point of mystery. Unless you end up there, then you'll know for sure. Uh, but the point is, to be a believer qualifies you to be a member of the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. And that is the ultimate bride of Christ that we see appearing in the revelation of Christ coming down from heaven adorned, the new Jerusalem, all of the church is already there in heaven during the end of times, whatever you want to equate that with. There is a lot of idiom and there's a lot of an analogy and there's a lot of mystic signs and symbols being rendered there. That's exactly what the angel said to John. It's all being rendered into signs. And Jesus himself spoke to John, and, and he explained a lot of these things. But even John was like, what's that mean? Uh, it's a good question. Interesting. But it was the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the Antichrist, not the revelation of the end of the world and everybody's ultimate demise. It all points back to Jesus, as always. And to be a member of the church, and to be a member of the bride, is the only qualification for the rapture. And that is a different thing from just being saved. There are those who are saved out of great tribulation, an innumerable amount from every tribe and tongue. That's not the church. These are people waving their palms in the Revelation, they're saved out of great tribulation. They're not the church, but they're just as saved. 
But what is the church? The church is those people who actually actively believed in Christ here in this life. You don't marry someone who doesn't believe they love you. You don't marry someone who you don't believe loves you, right? Jesus calls her the bride, not the saved people. She's my bride, the bride of Christ. And that's a different, that's a different designation. And I believe that a lot of people have their, uh, their hope for all people to be saved versus their hope that there is more time versus they're hoping there is no rapture. So all these people will ultimately, the kingdom will be set up here and everything's going to get better and better versus the reality of it, that there are those who are saved who are not the church. And that's something that you'll have to come to your own conclusions on. Uh, Now, I'm not saying that right now everybody's saved. I am saying that right now everything has been redeemed. And just like if I go into a pawn shop and I purchase the microwave on the wall, the microwave has very little to do with whether or not I purchased it. It's just there. I purchased it. It's mine. And it has very little to say about it. And that's what's happened to this planet and every soul, every person. It's all been purchased by Christ. Ultimately, it is his desire that none perish, but all come to the knowledge of the Savior's work on their behalf. Now, what does that mean? All I know is at the very end of the book that the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come and drink freely from the waters of life. Who are they talking to? Who are they talking to? Is there an ultimate hope? And I believe if you're not hopeful, then you are seriously deprived in, and maybe even a little depraved in your mind if you want people to burn eternally in some sort of Dante's, you know, description of hell. Maybe there's something wrong with you that you can't be hopeful that God actually isn't that big of a jerk and worse than any Hitler or Stalin, and wants to boil people in their own fat for eternity, perhaps there's, you know, maybe something amiss in your own life and in your own head. You should probably get some psychiatric help. But that being said, who is the spirit of the bride saying come to? Well, we know that everybody outside is sorcerers, adulterers, liars, thieves, all those who didn't quite get it there. So are they talking to them? Kind of pointless to say to the bride, come on in, wait, you're already in here. That being said, don't trust me. I'm just a guy in a truck. What do I know? Uh, Always do your own research. Always pray and ask Jesus because that's the good thing. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has made it very clear and very beautiful that you can speak to him yourself and the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And uh, I'll leave you with that. You uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And uh, we'll be praying for Houston. And uh, y'all be blessed. Pray for those uh, people who are suffering all around the world for the name of Jesus Christ. Because he is alive. The servant's not greater than the master. Y'all be blessed. Jesus loves you. Don't forget it. Bye-bye.